So suppose you have a set of objects f and operations of addition and multiplication on the elements of f. So in order for f to be a field, it has to satisfy two element properties, which are that if x and y are elements of f, then x plus y should also be an element of f, and x times y should also be an element of f. In addition, the operations must satisfy nine algebraic properties. Let's say that x, y, and z are elements of f. Then the following properties should be satisfied by these operations. Number one is the commutative property. Uh, the second one is the associative. Also, there has to exist a unique element 0 in f such that x plus 0 is equal to x. There has to exist a unique element negative x such that x plus negative x equals 0. Of course, negative x has to be in f as well. Uh, x times y should equal y times x. Uh, that's commutative for multiplication and associativity for multiplication as well. There also has to exist an a unique element 1, such, which of course is an f, such that 1 is a non-zero element and x times 1 is equal to x. There also has to exist a unique element uh, x inverse, which x times x inverse should equal to 1, and then of course the distributive property once you have these nine properties satisfied with respect to the operations and the elements x plus y r in f and x times y r in f then you can be sure that f is a field let's say for for addition this is our addition table as horrible as it looks um, zero plus zero obviously is zero 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1 is 0 because this is defined to be a, a set with only 0 and 1. And so 1 plus 1 is then uh, that value is 2, modulo 2 is 0. So it's, uh, it snaps back to 0 because there are only two uh, values in the set. And similarly for uh, multiplication, zero is all around except for one and so remember what we uh, just covered that in order for this to be a set we have to prove that let's say that we have um, this element x is is in x then we have to and uh, and y and another element y so we have to prove that x so we have to prove these three things of course the operations extend the the characteristics of what we're dealing with extend beyond that to the nine algebraic properties that uh, I showed you but the others are quite obvious uh, let's focus on these so uh, in this case we basically laid out and exhausted all the elements and the possibilities uh, using this operation. So the plus operation for, zero, for every single element with every other element is exhausted here. So we can see that 0 plus 0 is 0, etc. Meaning that all of these, all of um, these elements are actually x plus y, every possible element, uh, provided that x and y are uh, um, elements of x, of the set x, which is just this, uh, the elements in the Galois field. And the same thing with, with multiplication. Uh, we exhausted all the possibilities. Mm -hmm. So we showed that, indeed, x plus y is still in x, and x times y is still in y. We also, uh, we also showed that 
uh, or we can show now uh, in addition to that uh, zero times zero zero times anything uh, is zero one times one is uh, that that element itself or sorry one times the element is the element it itself so one times zero is zero one times zero is one um, we also have to demonstrate that uh, there's a unique element so that uh, this expression yields that zero in other words there's a unique element negative x such that x plus negative x is zero and uh, we exhaust it with everything but uh, it might be a little bit uh, more implicit w uh, negative one is equal to one here because that is to say that this this element we're looking for for with respect to one the element it maps to is negative one because one plus one in in this field is zero because one plus one is zero we can say uh what i'm trying to say here don't get confused i don't want to confuse anyone i'm trying to say that negative x is equal to one because that gives us the answer to this expression that one plus negative of x which is one is zero because one plus one is zero in this Galois field okay and for zero it's it's quite obvious um, of numbers so we have to prove that x plus y is is in k for x and y being in k so let's say that um, we have these numbers here x y and k we have to prove that x plus y is also in k should be quite obvious um, but let's just do it to be uh, very clear about what we're doing here so let's say that x is uh, a x a, a, a sub x plus b sub x i a sub y plus b sub y i i am terrible at, at uh, writing on this thing and uh, so then x x plus y uh, should be equal to our rational quantity on on the left side if you could just imagine that we're structuring it like this our rational quantity is quite obvious on the left side it's this quantity a x plus a y uh, and our other rational quantity if we factor out the i b sub x plus b sub y i and so indeed we can see that this is an element of k distributed and such <coughs> so we have to uh, take note that I square is negative one remember because uh, we're dealing with uh, complex numbers here so our left side rational quantity here is going to be a x a y <laughs> so we just multiply by negative one this quantity here <laughs> and what we get is let's take out the i already and just say x ax by plus let's put a parenthesis in here 
a y b x factoring out the i so we have a, a rational quantity a rational quantity and again i right there so that proves that x times y is still in uh, this set k and additionally with uh, 1 you can show quite obviously that 1 times x is still x same thing with 0 and you can show that uh, x plus negative x equals 0 and you can show that x times x inverse is 1 all those are quite obvious so we're not gonna uh, deal with that k is a field 